So despite being the biggest entertainment franchise in the world, Pokemon is in a very interesting place culturally when it comes to how people see the creative quality and integrity of their mainline games. It's no secret that the 3D era in particular has left a lot of us with mixed feelings on the franchise, to the point where it's honestly worth discussing whether Pokemon will ever truly have that magic that once captivated some of us. But despite much of the negative discourse around the series that I admittedly empathize with at times, I've actually been thinking that the Pokemon games have been doing way better than a lot of us will give the company credit for in recent years, even before the big announcement with Legend CA now in the mix. To start off with what's going to be a lot to talk about with these games, I gotta vent about my personal experience with the progression of the later gens, which to put it simply has been a mixed bag. See, for my own subjective taste, I generally prefer the 2D era of Pokemon to the 3D one from Gen 6 onward. Like when it comes to those earlier games, which I know are still far from perfect, the majority of them still left me with the feeling of a full experience, whereas the 3D ones, well there was always just something mixed in with everything I enjoyed that soured my experience. For one thing, I originally skipped Gen 6 entirely. Admittedly going through one of those little phases of I'm too cool for Pokemon as a teen back in 2013. But even when I got back into Pokemon by Gen 7, I went back to try and appreciate everything Gen 6 had to offer with Kalos and just didn't find anything that really gripped me like the older games. At best, everything amounted to a sentiment of it's fine, I guess. But then there were other things like the new 3D style that, to this day, I'm not the biggest fan of. With Gen 7, I actually found it to be pretty fun, but I couldn't get over how in this new 3D setting that was now the norm, your character tends to feel like a lifeless husk as everything is happening around them, at least in my opinion. It's interesting because that point by itself is something I've reflected on a lot over the years. I know this may sound like an oversimplification, especially because there's a lot of people on here who may know way more about game development than me, but creatively, I feel like Pokemon just struggled to find its identity when it entered the 3D realm. Every successive gen feels like they're trying to find their footing in a way that's hit or miss, though yeah I imagine some may cite games like Colosseum as outliers to this. Which is correct in a way, but I'm more so just thinking of the mainline games and how those are the ones that seek to give us a kind of complete package. With the protagonist as a starting point to this, that lifeless husk perception persists across Gens 8 and even 9 a little too, amongst other issues. Though, in thinking of why I feel this way and why I'm bothered by it, I feel part of it deals with the medium these games are being told through these days. Cause see, you could very well argue that Pokemon protagonists have always been lifeless husks. Like when has there ever been distinct character development, or expression over emotion or, or reaction from your character? That's always been the case, but now it's just way more apparent in the 3D age. Now I don't remember where. But I saw a passing comment someone made on their feelings for the 3D era, and they basically said the thing with a lot of individual Pokemon is that they were initially meant to exist and be at their best in a 2D space, and I agree with that. And also want to expand on that idea, because I feel it also extends to what we're talking about with how your character traverses these regions, as well as everything else presented to us the player within these world settings. So much of the characteristics defining those adventures, like the region design and town layouts, obviously wouldn't be fun or interesting if they were created one for one in the real world. You would never praise someone for literally constructing a place like Ecritique City with a square layout, you know, only a couple buildings, and have that be where people live. But I still have a fondness for a town like Ecritique because like so many other places in the 2D era, it left something to the imagination that I was engaged with. Like I remember playing Heart Gold and really enjoying the atmosphere of that place when you first get there. Same goes for any other town that in reality is super small with a few people in it. 
It's almost like you're reading a book as you go through these regions, interacting with things and people that, again, in reality aren't emoting. Like outside of the little exclamation mark and intentional gestures, you're not seeing characters make detailed facial expressions or reactions, and that was okay for quite a lot of us, I'd wager. Because our imaginations filled in the gaps, and in doing so, the adventure becomes more personalized. What's interesting is that, to this day, I feel that Gen 5 really perfected this kind of artistic expression while also pushing the envelope with a more detailed world setting, and I think plenty of people would agree with that. Movable sprites, impressive cities like Castelia that are pretty different from a place like Ecritique but still filled with its own character the player can pick up on, and even the little cutscenes feel like a happy medium between 3D and still being a little pocket adventure, cause ultimately, I think that's what Pokemon was meant to be originally, you know, a pocket adventure. It's just a situation where the essence and the scale of these games started to supersede that nature. The games had to be more than just a pocket adventure, and I think the reasons for that are rooted in both consumer culture and business alike. Socially speaking, I remember being a kid and there being a lot of clamoring for quote unquote real world Pokemon that stepped out of the 2D confines. It was this almost playful attitude of when are we going to get Pokemon with an actual overworld that's filled with Pokemon running around? There was this attitude that that was the natural progression of what the franchise should be. And I think that was the beginning of many fans shifting their overall desire for what these games had to offer. On the business side of things, I feel part of why giving the series an identity in this 3D age proved difficult was ironically because they were trying to be innovative. You know, across the 3DS and then needing to make something akin to a home console experience on the Switch, there was an expectation to always up the ante with each gen, even more so than with the 2D era. Progress for progress's sake when it comes to the people in suits making monetary decisions. Combine that with the challenge of creating games through a medium they were relatively new to, and seeking to refine them in the creative sense, and well, it's kind of understandable how so much stuff feels like a mixed bag. This is the point where across the past decade, we gotta really look at what kind of trajectory that mixed bag has spelled out for the franchise. And while I know it may sound like I've been describing a downfall for the games, it's actually quite the opposite when we zoom out and look at how the creative people making these games have applied new ideas and improvements, even amongst the stuff a lot of us fans complain about and are tired with these days. Like, I know a lot of people in my age group share the sentiments I've been outlining to the point where plenty of our generation have fallen off the series, but among all the misses, I genuinely feel there are small incremental improvements over Gen 8 and 9 specifically that point to a resurgence in creative quality. For instance, the execution of an open world space in Sword and Shield saw reactions range from kinda subpar to it's okay at best, but you can see how they greatly refined that gameplay with Legends Arceus down the road, even though that game itself felt like a bit of an experiment despite how amazing the general consensus was for its quality. I feel like the significance of this improvement got lost amongst all the discourse comparing BDSP to Legends at the time, what with how disappointing the former was to a lot of people, myself included. Then Scarlet and Violet came with such timing that we had three whole games that people were sharing strong opinions over within a 13 month span or so. And it's crazy cause to this day, I feel like most of the inflammatory opinions for Scarlet and Violet were all centered around the overall performance and graphics of the game, which are valid, yes. But in looking beyond that, as I clocked in a ton of hours on my own time, I really feel it may be the best Pokemon games since Gen 5. Honestly. Like, if we shelve all the talking points about performance and graphics, the actual features, story beats, and character moments are top tier in my opinion, or at least worthy of recognition if your tastes are different. And ultimately, this creative quality is taking things they've played with, such as an open world setting started with legends, actual city and landscape design that you can traverse, a story that offers a revamped experience from the vanilla gem pursuit, and puts those things together in one game 
where we have access to experience everything together. They're all things they've been struggling with for a few generations, and now they've spent the past couple years finally finding their footing in terms of giving the player a gaming experience that offers something more than the standard formula we've been used to. Again, it's rough around the edges for sure, but I feel we should be able to agree that the creative people making these games, who actually want to develop the series in an artistic manner, they have a lot to work with moving forward. And I think that's reason to be excited for whatever's on the table for the next few years. It's interesting because I personally see potential for the mainline games to hit another golden age essentially, and I'm legitimately optimistic about that, especially after the announcement of Legend CA. Though I admit manifesting such a future can be tricky considering, despite having these people who want to make the games good in the end, I also feel that changing desires from a lot of us fans, like I alluded to earlier, that plays a role in our more existential satisfaction with the series. Like, online discourse is rarely holistically representative of consumer behavior for a product, but even within the environment that is the internet, so many of us have standards and expectations for Pokemon that feel fickle at times. You can read one person write an essay on Twitter about which direction they need to take, and then see someone reply with another essay advocating for the exact opposite. So in the same way you can say the nature of Pokemon as a little adventure changed, our consumer-based wants for these fictional worlds has also been in flux for a while now. And not to beat a dead horse, but the whole PAL world virality is a perfect example of that change for some of us. Like, putting aside all the multi-layered discourse surrounding its rise, one thing in particular I found intriguing was people comparing it to Pokemon, despite the fact that the pocket creatures are actually only a very small part of that game, and many players were barely interacting with them in a manner similar to Pokemon. Yet, there was so much conversation about Pal World being a competitor, which I honestly still don't get. Like, imagine for a second if you had a restaurant, like, like a burger place, that people were understandably dissatisfied with at the moment, but then a pizza place opens up down the road and advertises burger flavored pizzas and everyone started raving about it. Yes, they're both businesses in the same industry, and in a literal sense, that's competition, but in essence, that burger flavored pizza is a pizza. It's still a different food, fundamentally. Pal World is still a very different game than what Pokemon would ever offer, and so there's nothing for them to actually compete with, even if the games were all polished and at their peak in a way people often bring up. If you prefer Pal World's game experience over Pokemon, that's fine, but I feel like it's a bit silly to call it a competitor. As I listen to a lot of these takes, it really just makes me feel that, honestly, a lot of us have probably outgrown Pokemon and don't realize it yet. But like I said earlier, these online voices aren't completely reflective of Pokemon's consumer base, but they are pretty loud. And they're mixed in with, like I said, contradicting opinions that make it hard to see what consensus exists among players, regardless of age demographic. I'm sure there's even people who disagree on this video about what made the 2D era great, or that it was amazing to begin with. The thing is, at the very least, there are people on the artistic end who are trying to innovate in a way that has heart and aren't just concerned with churning out things on a conveyor belt due to the monetary success. And that's probably the final point influencing whether the games will find cultural success again. It's like, what balance can they find in stepping outside the box while also keeping the franchise profitable? Because I think a lot of times in the entertainment world, that creative exploration only happens if it's founded on an idea that makes money first and foremost. The thing with Pokemon is they're now realizing that even though they made money via a safe formula, they can't just be complacent with the fact that the games still sell like crazy and leave it at that. You know, progress for progress's sake isn't going to work in the long run, so you may as well put some real passion into it. And I think that's what they're starting to settle back in on. Right now, we don't know much of anything about Legend CA, but if they pull off another banger title, 
we might see people develop a special fondness for the Legends series. Like it's crazy because I already feel Legends Arceus does some things better than games like Scarlet and Violet or Sword and Shield, the whole protagonist emoting stuff being one of them. Because like, your character's presence has an evolving influence on that story, which is partially based on the actions of you, the player. You know, catching Pokemon, doing the little side quests available. Whereas the other games, pretty much everyone loves or shows respect to your character from Jump Street. From the start, you're treated as this person who has such amazing potential to do amazing things, and that reverence only goes up despite the fact that the player isn't doing anything outside of the linear progression. So I think that's something else fans tend to be disillusioned with. Outside of Gen 9, which this admittedly also applies to a bit even though it improves a lot in this area, the only thing that develops your relationship with anyone in these other games is being a strong trainer. That's pretty much it. But the Legend series is the most recent thing that might realize some of this newfound potential I've been talking about. You know, ZA's announcement went over pretty well to say the least. Even getting myself interested in Kalos yet again even after I said it didn't grip me earlier. So we'll see if they can gain momentum with this new title, as well as whether that snowballs into Gen 10 later down the line. Ultimately, I do think success is dependent on that, but also whether a lot of us on the consumer end can accept that the nature and philosophies of these works are inevitably going to change if Pokemon persists as a franchise across the decades. That balance is something I admittedly think will be difficult though, especially given the state of the internet and how Pokemon's brand reputation is probably tied to it far more deeply now than at any other time in history. But still, it's possible, and hopefully we all make some nice memories in seeing what's to come moving forward.